Hi everyone, it's me, Rebecca, the Colorful Book Nester, and I am here to have a discussion <laughs> about books and about reading and the past year and a half of my life. Just, you know, not much. I am going to try to keep it focused on the books. However, the background being, as you know, if you've watched previous videos, that we are in the middle of moving from the East Coast of America to Singapore, so the other side of the world. And that's why the background's kind of different and everything else. But mainly what I'll talk about is what's been happening in the last year and a half or so of my life in the realms of reading. Um, I've actually been doing pretty well with reading until probably the last two or three months when it started getting busy. But even then, I, I still am doing fairly well. But I've learned some things along the way about myself. So when we moved from Vermont, the, the little cottage that we had up there, and we came here, or we moved to the, the Jersey apartment across from New York City, we were moving into a one bedroom. Now this is a one bedroom apartment that we had that my husband actually was um, using just to go to and from work. I would come in on weekends. We had the second property, which was a little bit larger. And through most of COVID, we were at the second property and very thankful to have it. But the fact is that we moved in together about a year ago, just the two of us, in a very, very small one bedroom apartment. And with that meant things like, I didn't bring a lot of my coloring stuff, definitely. In fact, a, a very tiny little amount. And then I also didn't want to start bringing in my books. Now I packed up all my books. I think I have six or seven boxes. We'll know when it finally gets to Singapore and I open them up there. Um, six or seven boxes of books that uh, I had not read at that point and some that I had read because they're my favorites. I kind of wanted to keep them. Um, but I wasn't going to bring those to the apartment. There was just no way. Uh, we didn't know how long we were going to be in the apartment. I think we thought we'd be there for about four or five months and then move into a two bedroom and then all of our stuff would come out of storage and the books and everything didn't happen, needless to say, life went upside down and around, or half around, the world did, and now we're moving again. So, luckily, I didn't bring any of that. Didn't mean I didn't get some books for gifts periodically in the last almost a year, but what I mainly went to was reading on my Kindle. Um, I've had a Kindle for years and years and years. And I go back and forth reading on it. I have to say for travel, it's my absolute favorite. This is so thin, so easy to pack. It feels pretty good in the hand since putting this cover on it, all of that. But really and truly, I do love a physical book. Um, I enjoy that. It, there's it, Opening up a book kind of lets me separate and I go into a different reality, whatever the book reality is. Having something electronic still in my hand it's very easy to get distracted. Now, luckily this is just a Kindle. It's just a reader. It's not, you know, a, a, fi a fire tablet or any of that that I could get distracted by online things so much. And that's why I like this one, but it still feels like it's an electronic in my hand. I don't get that exchange into, this is my reading time necessarily, but I made that choice. I also got involved with NetGalley and started doing some NetGalley reviews, really enjoying doing that. Um, and those all come via Kindle, so that's great. And it doesn't add to my moving uh, issues as far as things to have to move. I do think they're very practical in a lot of ways, but I do miss my books. Uh, but I've been reading solely on Kindle for the most part. Uh, <laughs> for the most part. The other thing that recently I did about a year and a half or so ago is I started thinking about, I was digesting a lot of books. And I know there's a lot of readers out there that have four or five books going on the go. I started getting into that. I started having multiple books and by multiple, I was talking three or four, but I was getting disconnected from my reading. And you know, I was kind of blaming the authors for not being um, engaging enough. You know, I was thinking, well, maybe they just don't write an interesting enough book. And then I decided, hey, you know what? I love a buffet like anyone else, I guess, to some degree. But in general, when I want to go out for dinner or when I'm having a meal at home, I eat one ethnic-based type meal. So if I'm hungry for Japanese, I go sit down and we go to either a Japanese restaurant or whatever, and I'm only eating Japanese food. I'm not eating Japanese. I'm not eating Indian. I'm not eating um, Thai. I'm not eating American 
hamburgers or whatever, you know, I eat one meal and really savor it and I enjoy it. I get cravings for it, whatever type of ethnic food it might be. So I said, maybe like with books, I shouldn't be having a buffet going on it all the time because I'm not focusing on any one thing. Um, I was finding following plots, getting engaged, keeping up with what was going on, and overall reading time. And that's another thing that I'd like to discuss. So I made a promise with myself and a pact that I would read one book at a time. And I have to tell you, it's made a huge difference for me. Um, I'm more dedicated, I'm more aware if I'm engaged or not, um, and I get through books quicker than I was. Um, and I feel accomplished. You know, finishing one book pushes me on to go ahead and get another one going. Sometimes I have two going on, like I'm finishing up one, or if I've got a buddy read that comes in uh, every once in a while, I kind of put the other book to the side and I'll, I'll do my buddy read. But overall, doing one book at a time has really helped me. Um, I've also very much released myself from as far as, yes, I call myself a booktuber, but I am not a competitive booktuber. I am not somebody who's going to look at how much other people read and go, wow, I don't read very much. Well, I'm getting more engaged with my books. So the next thing is, is that I had this fallacy idea that if I had any spare time, I would spend it reading. And that I did, that I spent all my spare time that I had reading. And what I realized is when reading one book and you go, why is it taking me five, six days to read a 250 page book? It's because I'm not spending all my spare time reading. That was me lying to myself, <laughs> just to put it bluntly, um, wanting to be something that I'm not. And then I held myself accountable or I was upset with myself for not doing it. But what I realized is I have other, not only hobbies, but interest and then other things coming in. One of the things reading does for me is I love reading stuff that makes me want to go research and do more. If I was reading four or five books, either I wouldn't be engaged enough to even know, hey, I want to go look this up and see more about it. But if I took time to do that for four or five books, I get four or five books read in a year. And then, like I said, I'm not reading every spare moment, um, but when I do pick up, in this case, my Kindle, um, I'm focused on reading and it's easier for me to get engaged again and get back into whatever story because I'm only reading one at a time, but that's me. Now, the next thing is, is that part of, for me, for reading purposes anyway, I really do like the physical of a book and my husband likes to buy me books uh, you know because he knows it's something I like and we both like going to bookstores we really love looking through those um, and that whole kind of I don't know um, what is it called hunting and gathering you know you go hunting for a book and then you find it and you gather it. that thing I'm, I'm more like you know that that's my kind of hunting book hunting um, and the joy of when you find something, you're like, wow, and then you can buy it. So when we were on vacation in December, he bought me some books at Christmas time. And uh, I didn't, I noticed when we went to move and to pack up books that were in the apartment, I thought they would all be my husband's. Well, no, over the time, he's bought me a few other ones and I probably bought one or two myself. So I've added to my book collection. And um, that's something that I wanna make sure that I'm doing and reading those. It is nice. I recently have been working on this book called The Cornish Coast Murder, which was a great, great little book. Um, very interesting. I've, I've enjoyed it. It's a little mystery. It's set on the Cornish coast after World War II. Um, so, the writing was really great and not stereotypical, but with some stereotypical characters. Like, characters you'd expect to be in a quasi-cozy-ish mystery. Like, Whoever the character is, they have Yeah, okay. I said I wasn't gonna do this. I wasn't gonna go down the line start talking about books. And I just started it, doing it with this one. But however, this is the first book I've had in a long time that has been physically in my hand. And it was a paperback and I, I loved it. Um, I, it's funny, I'm kinda like along the lines of, I really like hardbacks. And I think it's cause I think I might wanna keep it and I'd rather have hardbacks on my shelves than paperbacks. But I didn't care. It was a book. It was pages. They were in my hand. And I really loved that. I could see. I, that is the biggest thing. 
this tells me percentage, which is kind of good in a way, but you know, 50% of a 500 page book and 50% of a 100 page book looks the same on this. 50% <laughs> of a 500 page book and 50% of a 100 page book when you physically can see it or 200 page book is very different. <laughs> So I really like being able to see where I'm going and how much further um, I have to read because I always get to that halfway mark and then it's like, woo, and I start reading much quicker, especially if I can see that it's almost time for me to be done with this. So um, I'm looking so forward. I think that's one of the biggest things is getting my books out of storage and having some physical books. I am thinking of how do I stay focused on those? Uh, don't go nuts and go out to bookstores and just start buying books. Uh, read what I have, get through those. But you know, when those things come out of storage, it's gonna feel like I just went to the bookstore because even though I know what some books are, it's very funny when I do walk through a bookstore now, I'm like, oh, I have that one, oh, I have that one. Um, but it will feel like I just got a giant book order. Um, so I'm wondering about that, how, how I'm excited about that and looking forward to it. But as far as my reading, I've been doing pretty well. I slacked off, I would say, and by slacked off, I just changed priorities of what I was reading. Um, one thing I will do sometimes is have a fiction book and a nonfiction book going at the same time. I'm about to pick back up a nonfiction book that I was reading before, which is about Singapore. So, you know, I just want to be able to read that. Um, and then I'm not sure right now, I've got Annette Galley to finish. And I started reading that one um, about 40% into it. So um, overall, I'd be really curious for those that do read multiple books going, what kind of is your reasoning? I would think it's, you know, that you don't know what, maybe what mood. Uh, what's your average reading amount on a daily basis when you have those multiple books? Because, you know, my average daily goes up and down and all over the place. I, one day I might not read anything. The next day I might read 20, 30 minutes. Uh, the next day I might read for two or three hours. Um, I don't have a set time. It's something I'm hoping once we get settled in Singapore that I will be able to do is really start hammering out some time for reading, uh, particularly like review books, uh, because I'd like to continue with NetGalley if I can. I've not requested any other ones. I've got my last one to finish reading and I still have a couple of reviews to write. I need to get all that caught up and start over with NetGalley. Uh, I wanna get my percentage read up a little bit better. And then I'll start with that. And I'd love to get a buddy read going because I've missed my buddy read with Reads and Eats over there. Fiona and I have really good buddy reads and I've, I've missed that. So that's where I'm at. I know this is kind of all over the place, but I thought I'd just come on and kind of chat for a little bit. Um, my, like I said, e-readers I like for the convenience. Uh, I, in fact, today, uh, you know, going on, this, on some public transportation, being able to pull this out when you know you've got fifth, even five minutes between stops or 10 minutes, I'm more likely to pull this out than a book uh, because I know all I have to do is close it and it holds right where it's at. So I, I like that. Um, so I'm not, I just think they're two different reading experiences and I think that you can have both. You don't have to love more one than the other. I just know that I've missed having a physical book in my hand. I really have. So those are just some thoughts and chit chats. Thought I'd stick my nose in and say hello. And um, again, if you want to keep following as far as the move and us getting over to Singapore, that's going to be over on the other channel called Beyond the Nest. I'll make sure and link that down below. And uh, you know, until next time, keep turning those pages. Bye for now.